Welcome to this podcast, The Music of God. I'm Lamar Boschman, and we're on an exploration of the music of heaven. Our conversations are based on topics covered in an online course called The Music of God, available at lamarboschman.com. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the music of Lucifer. Well, welcome to this podcast, The Music of God. I'm Lamar Boschman, and I am so excited about this subject. It's been my life study. In fact, the very first book I wrote was The Rebirth of Music with 1,100 mentions of music in the Bible. Wow. So God has an opinion about music, so we're studying it in this course. And this course is just actually part one, not the podcast. I'm talking about the course that's online at lamarboschman.com. I call it part one because this topic is so big. There's going to be a part two and three. Who knows? Because it goes on and on and on. And I have not found the end of this message or this subject matter yet. There's always new things to find in God's word. Amen. Well, there's a difference among scholars, like I pointed out in the last session. If this personality Ezekiel talks about is really uh, Lucifer, and if he really does have the ability to make music, but if they, you miss the point, if you don't know, it's a dual prophecy. It's for the king of Tyre, but it's also for Lucifer, the power behind him. Because in Ezekiel 28, 13, it says, The workmanship of your tambourines and of your pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. And so we're going to talk about this. And I want you to know that some translations won't say it. But remember we said in this podcast that if it's in any translation and inferred in text in any way, that we're going to go with that. And because we want to stretch our concepts concerning the subject of music in the Bible. So somewhere, somebody saw glimpses of this potential and possibility. And I'm not a Greek scholar, and I'm not a Hebrew scholar. So we're going to take their translations and kind of accept them to, as we think of the possibilities. Okay? So let's welcome... Uh, Batsurai Chada from Toronto area in Canada. Hey, brother, come on in. Join the conversation. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hey, it's good having this dialogue. I think that uh, we need to share it with all of our peeps and all, all of our tribe because this subject will really help all of us in our music making. I'm so yeah. excited about it. In that scripture, uh, Ezekiel 28, 13, uh, Batsurai, yeah. it says, th- they use the word, the workmanship. That word means service or ministry. So think about it. The ministry of your tambourines. So there's a purpose for him making music. There's a a service, uh, an intentional act for the blessing and the benefit of others in the tambourine. And it says pipes. Now, some translations just call those uh, uh, settings for stones, these little things, in the New American Standard, American Standard Version, Young's, Webster's, and the HNV say that they're tambourines and flutes. Can you imagine? And this is something important to point out, is was prepared for you, and some translations say in you on the day you were created. So God prepared tambourines, and pipes can be flutes, for Lucifer. And later on it says it was put in Lucifer. So let's just look at this aspect of him creating percussion instruments. This is like a, a small tambourine with the skin stretched across it and, and some uh, bells maybe hanging from it. And it was very primitive, and we have no idea what it sounded like if it had any tonal quality. Lucifer has this ability to uh, make music in this percussion. So that's her idea. Think God likes percussion? <laughs> Does he like rhythm? Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, God's placing it um, actually, like you said, within within him. So it's not something external from him. It's not something he has to go over there and do. Uh-huh. But it's just something that's part of his being. It's like, um, and that just says, like, if God orders it, he wanted it. So if he's making, say, like, hey, I, I made you, I want to equip you with the things you need to do your job and to do your assignment. And those things include instruments that I'm placing not just next to you, but in you. And like we said in the very first session, I think music being something that was part is part of us, not something external that we create. Right. Well, this whole aspect of the percussion 
what would be the purpose of rhythm or percussion in music that's in the moment, spontaneous from multiple sources? There is no downbeat. There is no one, two, three, four. What, what do you think? Even in the most spontaneous things, like again, like in Zimbabwe, we use a lot of drums and we use a lot of like shakers. And there's also things called marimba, which are almost like xylophones um, that have sort of a woody kind of tonal quality to it. Yeah, and the, but it's a, a rhythmic expression. It's, it's a rhythmic it's, expression. Yeah, it's not a meter. It's not a click track. Exactly. It's this rhythmic expression. But again, if music's fundamentally just these pulses of frequency, the frequency right. has a rhythm. That rhythm is part of music. I would argue that without rhythm, it's not music, it's sort of sounds. Now, rhythm doesn't have to be percussive, like in terms of thing. It could be like a melody that goes la, 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 Star Wars. Yeah. That has a rhythm to it, even if it's not percussive in its uh, nature. And if, again, if you're the chief musician, let's call it, and you are leading angels upon angels, I think the most important thing would be that you would have a rhythm. A rhythm unites. A rhythm allows people who are singing or in the room to play alongside, to play with and be unified. And the, the rhythm sets the, the yeah. meter, it sets the agenda. Phenomenal that the leader then would, would have percussion as part of him. Yeah, and, and that makes sense because I remember there was a teaching that the beats of the devil, it was not based on anything on scripture because the Bible says, praise him with the tambourine. That means strike the beat. Come on, let's go and dance. Well, you got to have some rhythm to dance unless you're just kind of floating around <laughs> with some existential movement. And, and then when you think about how God has given us a heartbeat, how there's pulse and seasons right. and times and rhythms and nature right. and in quasars and and throughout the waves of the ocean there's there's intervals uh, morning noon and night the planets and how they move it's all rhythm there's something about this that's fundamental with god and so it would naturally be in music correct 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 cuz that's part of his the way he wants things to be i love the word um cadence yeah, that's a good word. You know? And that can apply, obviously, to music, but it applies to those examples. Like, there's a cadence to the waves of the ocean. And, and maybe that's more what the music's like in heaven, because it's certainly I can't see them being all on beat one, two, three, and four together <laughs> when they're singing different languages, playing in their different cultures, all singing in the moment different things. So a cadence, though, could evolve. It's like this group over here, you know, they got something, this over here. And this whole corporate uh, expression that's multi, multicultural, multi-generational. I mean, are we all going to play and sing the same? I don't think so. But there's still rhythm as part of that. still a cadence, a yeah. throb. There's another instrument, that's right, that Ezekiel says that he had. And it was this, this wind instrument called flutes. Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown say they're literally holes in musical pipes or or flutes that have evolved into a pan flute. It's plural. That means Lucifer had the ability to make sound on multiple instruments. Now it starts to get complicated. Probably didn't put them up to his lips if he had lips at all, because we're going to find out that he possibly had four faces but one head. See, angels don't have wings. They're just depicted with wings because they move quickly. But archangels have wings. Cherubs have wings. And so we're going we're gonna to find out more about this, but let's stick to the point of his music making. Pipes, flutes. So there's this wind instrument aspect of him. Does that bring any revelation to you? Yeah, again, like the whole thing of spiritual bodies, physical thing, flutes, well, that needs air to pass through it at a certain speed, sort of creates a vibration. Um, so I don't know. Like, But when you were speaking, I was thinking of a more like a pipe organ. Oh, like, there you go. Church, multiple like, pipes sounding. Multiple pipes. <laughs> exactly. And we don't know if there's air actually up in heaven, but there's this aspect of <laughs> breath. And when you think of breath in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is depicted as breath. God mm. breathed on Adam. He became a, a living being, a spirit being. And yeah. when you think about spirit and air and life and breath coming from God's mouth and coming from ours as it blows and makes a, 
it makes a drone. It makes frequencies and sounds. There's, there's music in it. That's why I think God sang the heavens exactly. into existence. I don't know. It's just a theory. Yeah. It's just the passing of matter, of some substance through another and escaping at a particular pitch because of where the hole's placed. But I think the big point is that there's a percussive type instrument in the tambourines, but you also have a melodic type instrument in the pipes. Yeah. That the two things combined. Like, Maybe they were harmonic too, who, possibly. If there's yeah. more than one. Exactly. Well, yeah. Oops. He would just do different things. So I, th I think of those one man band type things, you know, where they got like. <laughs> a big kick drum and you know, harmonica on his mouth and stuff like that. There's another aspect, another musical entity that he says, because in Isaiah 14, 11, it says, I will bring down the sound of your stringed instruments. And this is a prophecy, again, a dual prophecy that is conducted to the king of Babylon, but also to Lucifer behind him. And it says, it says stringed instruments, which the word typifies a harp or a guitar-like instrument. So now we got wind we got percussion and now we got stringed stringed instruments that's that's plural again well actually they're all plural i think tambourines was plural too yeah yep tambourine so wow so there's a principle here made music on three types of musical instruments that god placed inside of him uh wow you have to get to the course to find out what exact scripture it is that said that it was prepared in him and the day he was created or what version that was but if that's the case he didn't sit down at a drum set he was a drum set he didn't hang guitar externally around him he was guitars yeah he and he, he was full of pipes <sighs> So oh, he was not a player of instrument. He was an ensemble of instruments. Like you said, a one-man band, all yeah. composed in his makeup. Whoa, <laughs> drop the mic, blow my mind. Again, it just speaks to if God would label that this with a seal of perfection and say, this is ideal. Wow. Um, is That's that true. music is not something that is external, just external. It should be something that wells up from the inside. Very good. It so it's not the playing of instruments that's mean. God has already made us an instrument with our hands clapping, with pipes on our voice, with reeds in our vocal cords, obviously our feet and hands being percussion. He's not looking for something externally created, but something that emits from us. That's the perfect sort of type of music. We've let the external big music and songs and all this stuff, well-produced stuff, to be the standard. But our own song is the standard. Yeah. And that's why this course and this podcast is so important because it's pointing us to be like the music in the kingdom of God, like it is the music in heaven, the original intention of music in God's economy. So, so wow, these three instruments inside of him, it's a whole band. And yet he was brilliant and stunning and could make all this music. And it says in the Bible that he was the anointed cherub. We're going to probably get into that a little more in the next episode. I'm not sure. But it tells us he's a cherub. The cherubs that are described in the Bible had multi-wings. Some of them had four faces facing each direction and one head. And kind of like the four living creatures, but a little different. Seraphs and cherubs, they're very mystical and, and their descriptions are hidden in Scripture. Uh, but Seraph sang. One question, Batsarai, did Lucifer sing? I can't find where there's any reference to him singing, but because Seraph sang and these four living creatures possibly were cherubs, they weren't archangel-type cherubs, perhaps a lower dimension, I'm not sure, and they are singing, we can surmise, so very possibly, Lucifer sang. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? I would agree with that. I'd also say, well, what's singing? Isn't singing the passage of air through a pipe mm -hmm. with some reeds on it? Uh, he's already spoken about pipes. Maybe there's reeds in it. You know, he's got so many vocal, you know, who knows what those things are. Again, right. make sure we don't try to, well, he's got a pipe. He says it has pipes, so that must be, you know, he's got a whole bunch of silver flutes sticking out of him. Whereas it maybe just, hey, like you have 
multiple vocal cords. There's, I love this, there's throat singing, I think it's called here. You can see a couple of examples maybe on YouTube where people can sing, can sing a chord. So instead of one note, you know, they would sing a chord. So it wouldn't be just be like the C, uh, they can somehow make three notes in their one, with that one sound. Wow. And it is crazy. It's a skill, you know, maybe he has multiple vocal cords. I don't know. There's just, we have a pipe. And so if he has a pipe, could he sing? Yeah. <laughs> That's really thought provoking because he... <laughs> It's very possible that he has some kind of expression that's way beyond our ability to comprehend because exactly. I'm, I'm still baffled by how he makes music on all these different instruments that are inside of him and, you know, how they interacted with each other. And he wasn't a player. He didn't just hang him around his neck. He, he, he oozed music. That's exactly. why I call him the music angel. He just oozed music. It's just captivating. But one thing it tells me is that let it be done on earth as God created in heaven. If God valued a music angel to ooze music out of him in different expressions, then may we be those musical instruments. May we be those musical entities that ooze rhythms and sounds and pitches to him constantly and continuously. Exactly. Yeah, we are not fulfilling our full potential. And I think, you know, sometimes you see these people, these musicians in other other countries, especially like in indigenous cultures or Western, uh, Eastern cultures, the musicality is not, oh, look, he plays the piano well. It's just something like in the way they sing and the way they talk. Some some languages are actually very musical in and of, in and of themselves. They have tones and pitches. And yes. yeah, there's something about music. I think the big takeaway from all of this is, Music isn't something in God's mind that's ideally separate from us or something that we do, but it's something that comes from within us, both in a physical way, in our hands clapping, in our singing, in our stomping of feet, um, but also just even at an emotional level that it's what makes a song special is the heart and the emotion behind it. I think Lionel Richie once said, I play a C, like everybody else plays C, you know, but it's how you play a C yeah. that makes all the difference and make people feel something. And I think God has placed that ability in us as his creative beings. Yeah. And so we should focus on that and become those entities that ooze musical pitches and rhythms to God in worship as a life, as, as an entity, because wherever mm -hmm. this entity goes, you know, worship goes because I'm, I'm a temple. I'm a, a mobile temple of worship. But instead, we go put it on a platform in an elevated place and ask earthlings to look at us and praise our art. Look at this thing I created. Aren't I special? So you see where this is going? Oh. We're going to get into this in our future episodes of the music angel and the darkness that lurks inside of him. So thank you, Batsarai. This has been a great discussion. And I'm Lamar Boschman. I'm looking forward to our next session when we'll explore the appointment of this magnificent musician. And we're going to break down what his role was a little more uh, specifically. So don't miss it. Check out the Music of God online course at lamarboschman.com and go deep, do a study, and tell your tribe and tell your team about it so that they too can become the kingdom musicians God's looking for, I believe, in the end days. So we'll see you on the next episode of The Music of God.